Last night, voters in San Francisco recalled three members of the city's school board. They were Democrats, like everyone else on the seven-member board, but they succumbed to a recall effort that started 13 months and three pandemic waves ago by parents who wanted schools reopened. Critics say the board mishandled online learning and focused too much effort on a plan to rename a third of the district schools, while many of them were closed. Why am I telling you about a school board recall in San Francisco? Because we live in an age where any election anyway is immediately mined for hot takes, and we already have a scorching narrative out of this one. This election was about the culture war, wokeness, Democrats force-feeding your kids racial propaganda through N95 masks. Now, maybe there's a nugget of truth deep within those takes. Or maybe they're the latest example of how public schools have become a center of gravity for right-wing culture warriors who are using lies to engineer widespread moral panic for maximum political advantage. We'll let San Franciscans sort that out. This is a national show, so let's talk about the national picture for Democrats. It's no secret that with midterm elections looming, they're in deep trouble, according to Gallup polling a year ago after the insurrection. 49% of Americans identified as Democrats a nine-point advantage over Republicans. But today, those numbers have reversed. 47% of Americans now tell Gallup they're Republicans. That's a five-point advantage over Democrats, the GOP's largest lead since 1995, and a 14-point swing in a year. Democrats seem to be at a loss to answer two basic campaign questions. First, how much do you focus on Donald Trump when he's not on the ballot? but still pushing the GOP further into authoritarianism and white grievance. And second, do you focus on Americans' many pocketbook issues, on kitchen table issues, or on conservative culture war attacks, on mask mandates, race education, book banning, and the like? Well, the establishment Democrats in charge of House campaigns think they have an answer. On Tuesday, Politico reported that the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee has internal polling that shows Republican culture war attacks are working, giving voters an impression that Democrats are preachy and judgmental. The DCCC says that rather than countering or changing the subject, Democrats have to correct the record and publicly deny the false charges. Tell voters that they're not going to defund the police and don't want open borders. How amazing that a poll commissioned by the DCCC completely supports the DCCC's approach to politics. Amazing. Let's just take a moment to consider that advice, that Democrats should loudly answer the other side's most outrageous accusations. When has that ever failed? I'm not a witch. I'm nothing you've heard. I'm you. I'm not a witch. That was Tea Party favorite Christine O'Donnell, who, before her 2010 Senate race, admitted to dabbling in witchcraft, but denied she was a witch. She lost that election. And perhaps that's an extreme example. But even if Democrats were to follow the D-Trip's advice and fight back, it might not help them much. You know how I know? Because they've already tried it. President Trump says that you want to defund the police. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you support defunding the police? No, I don't support defunding the police. No, I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. The answer is not to defund the police. I'm the Democratic Party. I am president. So is the, the Speaker of the House, and so is the, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, majority leader. We and, are not defunding the police. And have are not. there people who, in the Democratic Party, who want to defund the president? Are there people in the Republican Party who think we're sucking the blood out of kids? So there's a chance you might defund the police. Joe Biden and Democrats have spent years denying the defund charge. They've pointed out that nobody is force-feeding your kids critical race theory. But it doesn't matter. In fact, it might be making things worse, because Democrats appear to have forgotten the lesson given to them by Lyndon Baines Johnson. You see, LBJ used to tell a story about, as a candidate running and losing in a race for county commission in East Texas, the candidate asked his campaign manager what to do. And the politician tells him to accuse his opponent of having bestial relations with a pig. The candidate protests, but he doesn't, does he? And the campaign manager answers, no, but can you picture him denying it? Republicans can. This is a game that they have perfected. Make Barack Obama deny that he was born in Kenya. Make Nancy Pelosi deny that Obamacare is socialism. Make election officials deny that Italian satellites chained thousands of Trump ballots to Biden votes. 
It's all the more bewildering because on most of the big policy issues of our day, on guns, health care, reproductive rights, taxing the rich, and yes, on vaccines and mass mandates, more Americans say they prefer Democratic Party policies and positions. They do. But people don't vote on policy. They don't, sadly. 75 million Americans voted for Donald Trump in 2020, even though Republicans literally had no platform. None. So Democrats need to talk much more about what they stand for, who they're fighting for, and what they're fighting against. Instead, they're choosing to play defense and to keep repeating their opponents' lies to try and debunk them. Isn't there a better way to fight the far right? With me now to try and answer that question, Anat Shenka Osorio, longtime progressive campaign consultant and host of the Words to Win by podcast, Brittany Patnick Cunningham, an MSNBC contributor, a member of Barack Obama's task force on 21st century policing and host of the podcast Undistracted, and Sochi Hinojosa, former spokesperson for the Democratic National Committee. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, Brittany, let me start with you. If a Martian landed on Earth, I would struggle to explain to the Martian how it is that the historically unpopular party that got walloped in the last presidential and congressional elections, then followed that up with an armed insurrection and an impeachment trial, is now on course to take back the House and maybe the Senate too. Isn't that on the Democratic Party? I mean, listen, we have to stop getting caught flat-footed for what we know we can expect. We can reasonably expect the GOP to be excellent liars and to continue to set the rules for the game that they want to play. So we shouldn't be surprised by that and not be ready to fight back when it's time. We should always expect that whenever the conversation shifts to how the most marginalized can experience justice, that the people in privileged positions will push back. That is a guarantee. So we should not be caught flat-footed when that happens. We should know that repeating the lie spreads it, even when you're repeating the lie to debunk it. These are things that, as you've already said, have been proven time and again. And the question is, when is the Democratic Party going to decide once and for all that instead of being followers, they will be leaders, that they will remind people that the GOP is historically the party of no and that they have been the party of yes to yet again talk about what they are fighting for and what they are going to do to actually push through the policies that we know are totally popular. I will also say that had the Democrats made good on their legislation legislative agenda up until now, there'd be little room for the GOP to be waging yes. this culture war. Anat, when Richard Nixon got up in the White House in 1973 and said, I'm not a crook, everyone in America immediately got an image in their head of Nixon as a crook. Uh, of course, it didn't help that he actually was a crook. But don't <laughs> Democrats run the danger of perpetuating these cons conservative culture war charges when they answer them in the way that Republicans really want them to answer them? I mentioned LBJ's story. But what are the pitfalls of a DCCC campaign strategy like the one they're proposing this week in 2022, in your view? They're actually twofold. What you raised, which is incredibly apt, whenever we take loaded words like crook and Nixon, in this case, or immigrant and job, or Muslim and terrorist, or law and order, and in order to debunk, debunk them, we accidentally repeat them. What experimentation shows us is that people recall the assertion, but they cannot recall whether it was true or false because the cognitive weight of those very heavy words is so much stronger and so much more memorable than the denial, than the little itty bitty word not. But the second thing that yes. happened is that we volunteer to have the opposition's argument. And so if we are volunteering to people the notion, for example, that the border is insecure, we're bringing that top of mind, what that causes them to desire, at least for conflicted voters, is the robocop that is supposedly going to come and bring in force and order, not the flabby B minus version. We are volunteering to have the opposition's argument and then hoping to win on their yeah. turf. When That's instead, a very good point. If you... sorry, go ahead. No, no, finish your point. Sorry. When instead, just as we know that nature abhors a vacuum, so too does messaging. And when we fail to say what we are for, when we fail to say what is our vision of what safety looks like, what does it mean to live in a community in which no matter what you look like, where you come from, what's in your wallet or what your accent or skin color, we and yeah. our families can make it home safe. When we do not present You're what we are for, 
it allows the opposition, that room, to come in and fill in that vacuum with lies, as we all know. And you're absolutely right about the kind of B-minus version. The idea that if people want, if people are worried about law and order or border security, they're going to go with the party they think is associated with those issues. Uh, so, she, as I pointed out in my intro, Joe Biden has said, I'm not defunding the police more times than we can count in the past two years. But the right has an entire media industrial complex ignoring those statements, churning out misinformation and lies. Surely Democrats can think of a better way to deal with this attack than giving up valuable time that they could use otherwise to talk about their accomplishments and vision. Well, that's right. And I think that Republicans have mastered the art of lying um, and have a network like Fox News and other right-wing media outlets that will continue to fuel those narratives, whichever narrative they would like to push that is false to the American voter. I think what is critical here, though, is while the left doesn't have a Fox News or someone that's just going to spew out lies, I think what is critical here is that organizations like the DCCC should be watching out for these narratives that are taking hold and the misinformation that is out there directly to voters, and they should be targeting voters with the truth and exactly, you know, what they stand for, what, whether it is, you know, they don't believe in defunding the police, um, whether it's correcting the record on critical race theory or whatever that is. I think that candidates should be spending their time exactly what everyone's been talking about during this whole conversation, what they stand for, how they're going to help people's lives, what they've already done to deliver. And it is up to the party committees and the party apparatus, not only to monitor misinformation that will 100% come and you know has been over the last few years from Republicans, but then to respond and to target those voters that are receiving it directly. That way you're not necessarily repeating a lie. You are giving the exact people who are consuming that information that you um, that you need to target to, and to, in order to turn out the vote. You're, you're, you're giving them the truth and you're allowing so candidates she... to talk about their message. Isn't the problem, though, Sochi, I'm listening to what you're saying, it makes perfect sense, but isn't the problem that a lot of people on the DCCC and people who share their view of the world, they don't think it's a lie. They do think defund the police cost them lots of seats uh, in the 2020 House races, which is, of course, you know, a disputed issue. Well, I, I, their job is to support candidates and to win. And so in order to support candidates and to win, what you do is you do everything to help support your incumbents by telling them exactly what they believe in. And I think that we all made very clear, I, I don't know how many times I went on Fox News saying that we did not support defunding the police, as did Joe Biden and everyone else in the Democratic Party, right? And so we know that these, these issues are going to continue to happen. We just saw it in Virginia, where critical race theory ended up being um, a top issue, and yet, um, and it was consuming the news, and it ended up being a distraction for our candidate there. And so we don't want that to happen again. And it, it is up to the party committee apparatus to take on that work um, and to defend these candidates okay. because it's not just the can the candidates can't do it alone. Brittany, what do you think of what Sochi just said? And what would you describe as an offensive Democratic Party strategy that you'd like to see? So listen, I am a basketball fan, Chicago Bulls specifically, because my dad was from the South Side. And what I know to be very true about basketball is that nobody wins a game by only playing defense. Because you're doing two things then. One, you're not setting the rules for the game that you want to play. And B, you are submitting to the rules that the other team wants to play. So playing offense means that you are actually putting the other team on defense because you are not just coming out strong with the game you want to play, but you're reminding everybody why that other team is not as good as you. So part of the offensive strategy is, yes, about Democrats letting no, letting folks know what they are for, about changing the conversation to not actually repeat defund the police if you're that worried about it, but to say, I believe in funding safe communities, so I'm going to fund housing, I'm going to fund mental health care, I'm going to fund school counselors, and I'm going to fund safe streets. Those are the kinds of things that we can be for. But here's the other thing, because this is the thing that I continue to not see the GOP, uh, the, the Democrats do, rather. In order to create these culture wars, the GOP tells lies about the Democrats. The benefit here, though, is that we can just tell the truth about the GOP, and that is offensive enough. We should be out there telling folks that this is the party that has systematically put generations of your family's money in their pockets. We should be talking about the fact that this is the party that has single-handedly been rolling back the rights of 
of the so-called individual as we talk as we look at things from uh, from reproductive rights to voting rights we should be talking about the fact that this is the party that wants to make sure that as long as certain people have their bottom lines met that they don't actually care if your children's yeah. drinking water is clean no, it's a very These good are the point folks who are ashamed of real history let's actually go as far as putting the gop on the defense because frankly they have a whole lot to be defensive about Tell the truth about the GOP. It's not that hard. We try and do it on the show. Uh, Anna, let me ask you this. Uh, Sochi mentioned Virginia and what happened to Terry McAuliffe. If you were advising McAuliffe, what would you have told him to do to deal with the whole critical race theory that Youngkin was pushing and basically won on in many ways? Here's a message I would have offered. Granted, not copy edited, making it up on the spot. But basically, no matter what we look like or where we come from, most of us want our children to learn the good and bad of our history so they can reckon with our past, create, understand our present and create a better future. But today, my opponent, who has systematically endangered your children by exposing them to this virus and opposing masks and vaccines, and has spent his entire career stripping money from our public schools, wants to divide and distract us, peddling lies about what is taught, when we know our children are courageous enough to know the truth. He yeah. wants our kids exposed to bullets and not books. I know exposed that in this bullets? state... Yeah. <laughs> exposed to bullets, not books want, is a great line. I I hope, I hope the next candidate running against a Republican is right that, writing that one down. Exposed to bullets, not books is great. We're out of time, but I have to ask Sochi one last quick question. I feel like part of the DCC strategy of blaming uh, defund the police uh, for bad poll ratings and possible losses, is that the party leadership and the establishment just trying to get in early and create a scapegoat for the defeat that they know is coming to blame the left rather than Joe Manchin or Kirsten Sinema? Well, I think that they, you know, everyone understands that this is going to be a hard, a hard election for Democrats. It is oh, when we have, you know, when we hold power. But I think the reality is, is that everyone understands that it is actually the pandemic that is really hurting us right now. People want to get back to normal and they should be honest about what those issues are. And no, I don't think it was defund the police. You know, Republicans tried to run with defund the police. And listen, we ended up winning the presidency and we took hold of the Senate. So I will, I have to largely disagree with the DCCC that that is what has lost us seats because the year that that happened, we actually yeah. were able to take the majority of everything. We'll have to leave it there. Fascinating discussion. We could have gone on and on. Anat Shenka Osorio, Brittany Packnett Cunningham, and Sochi Hinojosa, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.